Here to help us get our finances in order is the author of Rich Bitch, a simple 12-step plan for getting your financial life together finally, is financial expert Nicole Lappin. Welcome, Nicole. Good to have you with Great us. Great to see you guys, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> obviously the best show ever. Super ever. catchy title to the book. You but think? I totally love it. But explain to everybody out there, what does it mean to be a rich bitch? Well, it's not about bling bling and private jets. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> a rich bitch has confidence to know exactly what she wants out of her life, whether it's buying a home or chasing her dream career. And she is fluent in the language of money, which is key to achieving those goals. This would be the first time I'd want to be called a bitch, I think. Yeah. Go, if rich was before the bitch. But I you think that's I right. I think it's empowering to take control of the word. Yes. You know, which is so, so yeah. often used as an insult and say, you know what, fine, I'm going to own this word yeah. and I'm going to show you how strong and, and powerful yeah. I can be. I've been called a bitch in a derogatory sense, but there is nothing wrong with being strong and confident. So it is taking back the word and owning it. Yeah. And you call this basically the Rosetta Stone for finances. Explain that. I think the number one reason that people are so intimidated by the topic of money is the language. Mm -hmm. Let's be serious. It's pretty boring, and it can make it feel really scary. So in order to get people excited about talking about money, you have to change the language. Yep. So this is the first personal finance book that speaks in real English, like we're talking in right, right now, right. or like we would offset, or in the club, or <laughs> off right. hours. Right. I keep it real. Is it just for the ladies, though? I mean, can he be a rich bitch? Can I learn JD something from it? will be our honorary male rich I am, bitch. I am <laughs> proud Absolutely. to be a male rich Badge bitch. Thank you very honor, much. Baby. Who, who generally is the book for? Yeah. It is for my former self, this girl who is smiling and nodding and too freaked out to join money conversations. I'm really honest about that. But really, it's for any woman at any stage of her career who wants to get her financial life together and look her destiny in the eye. You have an interesting story, too, which you talk about. You and you weren't always a rich bitch and you grew up in a family with immigrants and they literally hid their money under the kitchen sink and didn't believe in banks. Yeah. So how did you come around to this idea? I'm the least likely financial expert there is. Growing up, there was never a Wall Street Journal on the kitchen counter. There was no discussion about money. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend in high school said he wanted to be a hedge fund manager, and I thought the dude wanted to be in gardening. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so clueless. And so, this whole conversation intimidated me until I got a job on the floor of the Chicago Merck, which is the stock exchange in Chicago when yeah. I was 18, and I was thrown into the deep end, and I had to learn this language of money. And what I realized is that it's just a language like anything else. It's not yeah. that serious, so that's why I wanted to be the Rosetta Stone for it. In the book, you have the confessions. You have confessions, confessions. of a rich bitch, which is you talking about your own past mistakes mm -hmm. with finances. And finances are such a, a tricky thing to get people talking about. Why do you think it was important for you to include confessions about the things you've done wrong in the past? Those are more fun. The yeah. stories are always more fun. But the only way to tell a story is to tell it honestly, warts and all. So mm. I've become comfortable in my own skin as a financial expert to say, here are all the things I've messed up on along the way. Here's how you can laugh at me. Please do. Like, I take it for the team as long as you smile when you think about money. Here's how you can learn from me in some cases, be inspired by the things I have did, or just avoid them altogether. Right. Yeah, sometimes talking about money with your friends and your family gets a little bit tricky. Why do you think that is? Why are people so intimidated to have a conversation? about money. I think women will talk about just about everything pretty much before we talk about yeah, money. Yeah. And I think it's because we haven't been equipped in school, we never learned about personal finance mm. to talk about money in a confident way. And so once we learn this language, we can join the conversation and that's when we really feel empowered. So being a rich bitch doesn't mean you need to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I certainly wasn't. Mm. Uh, you don't need a man to be a rich bitch, <laughs> except JD, well, of course. I need a man to be a rich bitch, that's for sure. But it's, you know, it's about you taking control of your own life and your own destiny. You also say, and I think this is a good misconception to clear up, you also say you don't need to have an MBA. You don't no. need to be a hedge fund manager. You, being in charge of your own finances and being empowered is for everybody, yeah. right? Math and numbers doesn't have to do with money. If you look at it from a way that it's very cultural, when I talk about stories uh, growing up, I paid with a check. I was that weird, awkward girl who paid with a check at dinner with her girlfriends. And I didn't want to be that girl anymore. So I said, enough is enough. Uh, the boyfriend from high school dumped me because I couldn't hang out with his Wall Street friends. Aww. I think his Wall Street friends might want to hang out with me I now. bet they do. Just I bet he's regretting that decision. <laughs> but it's, it shows that every story goes back to money and once you look at it and not compartmentalize into like your checkbook it becomes much more interesting yeah you stress a lot in the book too about investing in yourself so what's the best way to do that 
I think it's necessarily bumming around Europe, although JD is a pro at that. Love bumming around Europe. I love it. <laughs> but it's really taking control of what you want out of life. So it's first together we're going to realize what our goals are, and then you realize you're going to need money for those goals. So anchoring for over a decade as a financial news anchor on major networks, I realize that there's a new normal. There's no longer the American dream. It's your dream, and it's your destiny. So I think entrepreneurialism is a big winner of what we saw through the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. I think more and more people are taking control of starting their own businesses, whether it's an alpaca farm in South America or a cupcake <laughs> shop in Brooklyn. So I think it's about investing in yourself in that way to try and go after what you want through this sort of fun employed movement, which I think is a huge winner of what we're seeing right now in the yeah. economy. Nicole, thank you so yeah, much. Such great so tips. good thank talking you. to you. You can be a rich, rich bitch, bitch too. Yeah. Pick up a copy of the book.